Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and this is the legendary Iron Man Army of Turan. We're going to go into the next Guerrilla Ops mission. The game doesn't really allow us any breaks at the moment. It is still month number 10 or 11, I think. And the only thing that happened so far was a mission after mission after mission. So this time uh, we are being called to East Africa to Operation Fire Valley. It's a very difficult mission, which means we're probably facing around 15 enemies. But A, we're going to prevent uh, the enemy tech and psionic defense to be doubled, which would suck quite a bit. It wouldn't allow us to mind control and or haywire protocol in any shape or form. Plus, it'll give us a kernel specialist. So I'm a bit greedy here. Destroying an alien relay also is something that uh, we can certainly do. Uh, the two men that are going to um, uh, try to achieve uh, this very difficult task are going to be Renvin and Zirkim yet again the team is back oh my gosh and look at this nice uh, graphic here of uh, the upgraded shotgun that's just awesome to see how the knife's being tucked right next to it not that he's ever going to use it because he has like two massive uh, axes on his back but it still is a nice view anyways uh, so we're going in um, with some uh, protection against the potential Chosen that's going to show up. I'm frankly more concerned that the Viper King is going to show up. It's now mission number three, technically. So we got one, we had one mission and an ambush. So it's mission number three after we have poked the Hornet Nest, which means there's a high likelihood that he's going to show up. But with our um, abilities to chain shot and rapid fire, we should be capable of dealing enough damage so that the Viper King um, just disappears again. I think he had around 60 ish hit points, if I'm not mistaken, or 40, 45 to 60 hit points, and you need to deal a third of them as, uh, as damage. So if we're getting like a couple of solid hits in, we should actually be fine without him using either his breathing breath or um, or his grab. We got a couple of free shots. Um, for instance, the X is a uh, is a free shot. We still got the grappling suit on uh, Renman, and I'll intend to keep it there for now. Uh, on Zirkim, I'll intend to keep it uh, there now. So effectively, we. We, we probably could deal quite a bit of damage to uh, to this guy before he could actually move. But yeah, that's all theory. I don't even know if we're going to face the Viper King. Maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Who knows? Just in time. A third operator, if that's what we needed. Communications relay is up ahead. Move in and destroy the target. Let's take a look here. So we, we need to go here and just destroy the target, right? Uh, this is the typical bridge setup that we've seen a couple of times. Going to go all the way over here, right? A couple of explosives down here. And maybe, maybe we're going to go to the house on the left-hand side and trying to start fighting from there. You know what? Our newcomer should be the scout. Moving to position. Sophie here. Tries to find out where the enemies are at. Yeah haven't found any of them, surprisingly. Which means Renman is going to take a really, really, really solid and long run. We've got a hostile squad here. And Zirkim, his partner in crime, is going to move up here as well. Okay, fair enough. First enemy pack right ahead. Down to eight rounds. Let's 
So we got the blue screen, good old blue screen rounds. If I was to charge into here with the run and gun, both of them would take uh, a hit from Bladestorm, and I could afterwards just execute the the mech easily with rapid fire. And since we got Implaceable, that would even work out better. So I'm going to do a bit of an unconventional start here. Told you that Renvin and Zirkim are rather aggressive um, uh, combination, so there is actually no going back. There's the Blade Storm. Not even close. Did we load blue screen rounds? We did. So why? Oh, okay, got you, got you. So it's per shot. Yeah, let's just give it a go. Nice. It's dead. It has to be dead. All right. Implaceable. We're just going over here, so he'll. He'll take another beating next turn. I'm on the move. When Zir come up. Time for some solid grapple deploy. Getting him into a better spot. Oh, holy. I know a person who is going to not like what is going to happen to him in a second. Nice. Very solid hit. That's maybe a hit. No, it isn't. That's okay. Well, so much for the idea um, of whether or not he's going to appear. So, easy to hit from high ground, which we're going to do. Takes increased damage from Templars, uh, nothing that helps us. Can summon the Chrysalis, which is bad. We shouldn't miss him, is immune to explosions, and gets more defense after the first hit. Okay. And he has only 50 hit points, so that should be doable for us. Commander, one of the chosen is here. We'll have to deal with it before it throws nice. off the rest of our operation. He's in my I can't can't stop it. Okay. Gets a bit weird now. So the chosen appeared to come here uh, from here and is now upstairs. That's okay. Let me think that through. I mean, this here is just would be nice, but there is a chance uh, that this is not going to kill him because he has the potential for sustenance, right? Right, okay. But standing here means as soon as he comes out of sustenance, he would die. 
So might as well. Take a reload. Put in Reaper, kill him. And move to here, take a couple of shots. Sounds like a decent idea. Reaper, reload, attack, puts him into sustenance, did unfortunately not trigger uh, the Reaper because we did not kill him technically, that's the disgraceful part about it. Okay, that's a problem. That's a big problem right there. But we knew that it would be very difficult. So absolutely no surprise here. We need to make sure that we that that we can kill this guy. There is a chance for a kill on the first shot, which would trigger death from above. And I'm okay using a cooldown. There we go. And the reason why I'm okay to use a cooldown is because now we have untouchable. So we could drop back here, it's most likely the best idea, yeah, let's try to do that, it's still high ground Closing on target position now. and we're out of sight, which means they need to come to us. That's going to be a kill. With technical analysis, they need to just fly up and probably will cluster up a bit. That was the untouchable. Alright, bind failed because of... Because of uh, Blade Master. Okay, this is get going to be interesting. Let's come up with a good plan, shall we?
I am wondering, like a grenade, which would hit all of this, would kill most of them, if not all of them. Oh boy. Now the game collapses? No. Sorry, that's the anti antivirus scanner yet again. Okay, back in the game. Alright, which kind of leads to the question where would we position ourselves? Probably like somewhere here and see everyone falling down. Let's do that. We can still grapple back up next round. And as much as I want the high ground advantage, I think this is an opportunity which we shouldn't pass. Oh boy. Frame rates immediately drop down. Reload and let's soften up this guy. Teamwork ability to zero cam. I mean, we don't know where the others are. We know that one of them is up here, so actually saturation fire wouldn't make much sense. So let's just try to hit him as well as we can. And that's a pretty solid chance to actually kill him. I want to keep the throwing axe for now. So let's see if we can get him down. Yeah, we could. That's good. Uh, it's implacable plus untouchable. We got two of them. One on top here, one somewhere here. Superior Scope is a really nice loot. There's the Blade Storm. <sighs> Unfortunately, miss. But we still got Untouchable. Perfect position to just like keep on fighting at the moment. We don't really have a high ground that we could use. So let's soften this guy up. Reload first, soften it up. Nice little hit, good job. Is it the right time for the axe? It's probably not. It's probably not, not yet. The axe will need to wait until we meet the warlock. 
we were to just try to bully him down, that's probably a good idea. Alright, reload, chain shot, let's see if we can actually kill this guy. Gosh, it's the worst thing that could have happened. 90% chance, 6 plus 6 is 12, so with the grenade we could actually kill him. Because there is still Blade, uh, blade Master. Alright, let's kill him. It's almost down. He will trigger Blade Master. Uh, blade Storm. There we go. That triggered untouchable, so we are actually okay for now. Next round is going to be yet another round, uh, round with the zombies, so we need to kill him this turn. And that's a very solid start. Could put ourselves here in full cover. Let's do that first. No, let's actually move first. So I want to be able to react to whatever is happening once I poke the hornet nest, which is going to be like right now. All right. So theoretically, we could kill him by ourselves. You know what? I like the idea of being able to stand here okay. and having a better over, uh, overview. Let's soften him up. Every little bit counts. Contrary to my first statement, the X is not going to go into the Warlock. It's actually killing one of those guys. Nine points left over. Or to hit him, that's six to eight, or nice little shotgun shot. Alright, we still have Blade Master, so there's a chance that he's going to die. Shit, that's unfortunate. My Scorch is not going to deal any damage because we are immune against that. Moving to 
designated coordinates. We don't have the Reaper yet. I mean, it would be really, really nice to actually kill the grandfather down there. It's probably not going to happen. This is a 100% kill, but not, not from death from above. So he would not reset. Um... But instead, what we could do is... Whilst we're fighting against him, we could kill this guy, get untouchable and placeable, move here, or even over here. Hmm. I like the proposal of being able to take pot shots at him but I even like I even like the idea more of being completely immune if you say so. to his shots I don't think that he's going to shoot at us he still has a mind control he's going to use that first Okay, so that's two shots. Not the best odds, but we hit one of them for a nice little crit. Okay, that is, I'm going to be honest here, I have not expected this uh, to happen. Wow. Okay, we got to deal with the Berserks first. There's no way that we... Can't ignore them. We, we certainly we can't ignore them. We're going to go. We're going to start with this guy down here. Two shots, pretty solid starter. We also got death from above, so this here would be a kill. And, and a couple of a couple of uh, actions that trigger on top of the kill. Um, if we were to position ourselves here, we're currently untouchable. Um, then the berserk can't get up here. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, they they need to climb stairs in order to do that. So I'm moving to here. Uh, it's going to be Berserk. Berserk first. That's how we roll. Maybe if he can't reach us, he's going to go for the Warlock. Maybe. Uh, apparently he can and will move all the way, so we're not... Oh, lucky. 
I was about to say we're now going to be shot by the warlock with his rifle. And that sucks even more. But he had mercy. Alright, let's slowly go over here. Still outside of the view of the Warlock. But it's a nice start. With the Berserk. Alright, the Warlock can't mind control uh, Sophie. Well, he's not going to use mind control on her. So that's not a problem. Um, it's a hundred percent shot. Let's kill the berserk first. So we're reloading, killing it, get an untouchable. And use some placeable to position ourselves here. Got some advent here. That's not exactly helping, guys. Watch the side. That is not exactly helping, guys. I am nearly upon you. Wow. Trying to get rid of of uh, the uh, the uh, mech first uh, because that's an issue. Standing right here, could move to here with uh, run and gun, uh, take dual shots and kind of move back. That's an option, which leaves us with this guy up here. Uh, with Sophie, we could go here, take a shot, and uh, then use Zirkim to blast him out of the water. I think that's more or less the best uh, course of action. Set him up. Knock him down. Already there. This here should not trigger Overwatch because we are immune against Overwatch. Nice little hit. And that blasted completely out of the water. We got him placeable and untouchable. It'll hit here. Of course, dodged. I'm trusting you here. Still got untouchable, and we're the only target for the warlock, so we should be fine. Going into full cover on the other side, so we're not taking shots on Zirkim. And this here is more like softening him up. Than anything else or hitting him in a way that he falls down and finds himself in a really really awkward position and then is forced to move all the way there to eat a blade storm well that's of course also possible and then he even hits untouchable <laughs> that's fine mind control mind scores yeah great
Reload. Reload. And we got a reload here as well. So here's the deal. We can even do it better. Let's Reaper. Slash him to death. That'll allow us to reposition, and we still got an action left over. Which is exactly what we're going to do. And then going to look for a nice little critical hit. And we're overwatching because uh, everyone else is out of line of sight. Which means the mind control is useless. We're still immune, buddy. And this might be the final nail in the coffin for him. Moving here, nice little rapid fire onto the chosen. Bam! Ten points of damage. Good job. Come on, buddy. And a crit for fourteen. Holy shit! That's nice. Moving over with the Zircam. Puts himself into a very nice position. 96% chance to hit this guy. That was an interesting and yet very, very fun mission to play. Got the good old untouchable here. I think we've cleared the entire map. Look at us. 15 kills like I predicted. Including the Chosen. Yeah, that was a strong showing. Ranman and Zirkim certainly are a great tech team. The three... The three uh, Archons were probably the crooks of the entire uh, of the entire mission. It's just a bit too much, so we took some damage, but only barely, to be honest, because uh, Blade uh, Storm did miss. The rest was pretty straightforward. This just goes to show that the Chosen are vulnerable, and we can take them down. Yeah, ten days. Figure out how to keep them down. I see a Codex Brain. Severe scope, yeah, I almost forgot about that. You have done an outstanding and we got Huron G. Pan, a specialist, a colonel specialist, plus a countered, a countered dark event, I like it. And look at this. Uh, we're probably not going to go with that helmet, buddy. But I am fine with giving you some other sort of helmet. Mm. 
Good, so we got a new soldier, and her name is Red. Probably, when I'm now saying anyone who wants to have her, just put it in the comments. At the time when this mission is airing, there is a good chance uh, that the soldier either hasn't seen a single uh, mission, or the entire run might be even over by then. Good, so medical protocol, revival protocol, field medic, threat assessment, guardian. I like the restoration ability, but in a squad run with only two, it has a bit of a marginal effect. So let's go with capacity discharger first. We can still get uh, this. She has 24 um, ability points to spend, so it's quite a bit. Let's go into the training center and train her accordingly. 24. I like Shredder, uh, it's a no-brainer. And we're probably going to respec Blast Padding into Death from Above. And I mean, Restoration is also only 15 points. I really don't want to give her XCOM uh, AP, so we're going to stay with that for now. Yeah, and we're going to use uh, the points when needed. So far we have upgraded uh, Hogbite quite a bit. And there is still room for other upgrades here. Ionic Storm, for instance, is super good. So we might save our points for him. Really need to make sure that we have like one or two monster uh, monster soldiers instead of many okayish soldiers. And by now, having a colonel is not an outlier. We can get a couple of those. Can even buy them from time to time in the black market. So there is 41 intel, like it. Avenger plotting new course. We definitely need more supplies. It's the main shortage at the moment. Now operational. Great. Although I'm in new objectives added. Good. We can continue. We are fully prepared. Uh, researching there, but I rather want uh, the improved rifles first, and we need to still upgrade the uh, the heavy gun. Zirkim still has not his upgraded weapon. Cool. So plus one damage to all of our assault rifles. That's huge. This will prove to have been an important breakthrough. And we're now going with Beam Cannon next, because that would uh, help Zirikim to upgrade uh, his Beam cam uh, Cannon. Uh, then probably Sector Port Breakdown for the highest, um, uh, the highest uh, Gremlins. I am thinking about what else. We could use some more Intel, that's always okay. Yeah, maybe we're going for psionics. I, will make I mean, at this point in the game, we're, we, we will probably not really use them. But might as well consider having them. Because you can train them without actually taking up space for something else. Tracer rounds aren't bad. We still don't have the supplies to do anything else. Uh, might as well look if we can get another item that only uses an Alarium core. But as it stands, so still waiting for an assignment. We can have them working on construction. Let's go with another experimental ammunition. Sounds good, Commander. I'll let you know as soon as the project is ready for deployment. I'm glad to see our joint effort paid off. Nice. We, we got the ability points. Um Roby got another health. 
and it's getting stronger and stronger. And now we're definitely going for the mission that allowed us to get the plus 10 dodge. And wait a second, why is the Templar not available? Doesn't make any sense. Hogbite is available. Oh, so we can't improve his combat intelligence anymore? Well, too bad. But I know who's going to be his partner on the final mission, and that is going to be Roby. So Roby uh, will get a couple of points of dodge as well. Let's look at his stats currently. He has no dodge, so 10 dodge is okay, better. We need way more dodge for Hogbite. This is not enough. That stinks. I wonder why he... Wait a second. I wonder why we can't uh, put Hogbite onto this mission. Is it just a bug because he was tired? His combat intelligence is not genius, so... Let me check something real quick, okay? Okay, so we wasted just a bit of time. Commander, the factions have readied proposals for various covert missions. We should head to the ring to plan our next stop. A couple of them are grayed out. Even Outrider can't do it. Well, this is what it is. Two, ten dodge are too good to pass by. So, Roby. Congratulations. You get yourself your deal. Covert is our specialty. Let's just hope your people can keep up. Oh, wait a second. The only two that were not allowed. No, well, that doesn't. No, never mind. Strategic resource located. Reduce contact costs is super because uh, that is as good as if we would find 80 intel. And we got another chunk of supplies in. That's really good. Which means currently we have too many engineers. Like we have an engineer in quite literally all of uh, the positions. And the only thing that we could really buy, uh, build would be another resistance communications. But I would want to use the supplies to upgrade the weapons instead because we are okay on uh, contacts at the moment. We still have four more to go. I hate idle staff, but I think that is just going to be how it is at the moment. Priority message coming through, Commander. Putting it on screen now. You have made considerable progress against the aliens over the past month. Alright, she's still trying to sabotage, so no Avenger shutdown. Increased training, good. Uh, ambush, that's not a problem. 100% recruitment cost, not a problem. So we're probably going for the hidden event. There is a soon a new facility and a retaliation strike. That is an issue. I think all of our selections here are already optimal. And let us first get these supplies real quick. We've had the shadow chamber running the numbers. These are the tactical projections for our Oh, nice. Finally, we get uh, the 
Shadow Chamber, so Priest, Heavy Mech, Viper, Andromedon, Spectre. At least no Archon. Spectre, Codice, Andromedon, plus Heavy Mech, that looks like a very blue screen rounds ish mission. Lots of Advan and a couple of uh, Vipers. It's not too bad. That's not too bad. Setting course for Sector 11, West Africa. Before we go in there, I'll uh, fix the team uh, real quick. But that's all going to happen in the next uh, mission. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment and uh, tell me what you think about this mission. Thanks, have a great day and see you soon. Bye-bye.